Hello again, my name is Dr. Svetlana Koval and I am introducing the four-level concept of the functional orthodontic examination procedure. In our previous video, we have been talking already about this four-level concept and we made the point that the whole organism acts as a single unit and all the structures within this unit are intimately linked. I have no financial relationships with any of the manufacturing and distributing companies of the equipment that I use and I either do not have any commercial interest in the uh, diagnostic and treatment procedures that I provide. I am providing my orthodontic treatments on an everyday basis and I aim to move the teeth to restore teeth and jaw relationships. And the morphological features that are describing these ideal uh, teeth and jaw relationships have already been described by the prominent, prominent orthodontists like Engel, Andrews and Rod, among many others. And what we're going to do, we are going to adopt a totally new concept. This is the concept of four levels of organization of the oral facial area. This means that uh, according to our theory, these four levels uh, have different Adapt adaptation strategies to the changing environmental conditions. According to our theory, there are uh, levels that include, the first level includes the teeth level, uh, the second level is the level of the chewing muscles, and the third level is the level of the temporomandibular joint soft tissues, and finally the fourth level is the level of the temporomandibular joint bones. The first level, the level of the teeth, is primarily involved in the reconstruction procedures and this level has the highest amount of adaptability. This level has a number of strategies that, that are trying to maintain the total system's balance on the same level. We all understand that the orofacial area is situated within the head and the head uh, and its position is maintained by the neck muscles, both anterior and posterior. And these muscle chains are antagonizing with each other. And these muscle chains are the parts of the ascending and descending muscle chains that are holding the total body's posture um, being the same. And we know that the points of origin of some of the neck muscles are located on the lower jaw and on the hyoid bone. And in this way, we understand that the position of the lower jaw and its spatial relationships are influenced by the teeth, by the head posture, and by the total body posture. So moving the teeth within this teeth level means that we have to change something and that something has to be changed to keep the balance on the same level. This balance is necessary to keep the head posture on the same level and this means that we have to keep our air airways free. Every type of manipulation within this level either reconstruction, restoration, tooth movement or even extraction should be monitored and controlled within this concept, the functional balance concept. The four levels of the orofacial region are examined gradually starting from the first one and going to the fourth. And the teeth level is also examined with the help of a functional assessment procedure. This functional assessment procedure is the T-scan occlusal analysis system. This is the procedure which aims to find the contacts between the antagonizing teeth and to find the area of the contacts, the distribution of these contacts along the dental arches and also to assess the duration of these contacts a lot of other characteristics can be obtained with the use of this T-scan occlusal analysis system. This is an August 2016 issue of the Journal of Clinical Orthodontics that I am now holding in my hands. And the cover illustration shows the successful lingual orthodontic treatment of my patient. This case report tells us that the lingual orthodontic treatment of this patient was uh, 
continued and the T-scan occlusal analysis procedure was applied after the completion of the treatment. There is also a number of successive articles published online which describe our approach of overcoming the relapse in orthodontic patients. This is what I wanted to talk about in more detail. We have revealed that there are some posterior contacts on the lower arch and on the upper arch that try to cause the anterior teeth to move, such in, in such a way causing the development of the orthodontic relapse. Uh, we have also been seeking for specific correlations between the, these contacts and the anterior te uh, teeth that they are causing to, to move. And we have revealed that these contacts uh, can, can be only checked and assessed with the use of this T-scan computer um, analysis. And these contacts are found during the excursive movements. Generally speaking, that there are some posterior contacts persisting in their locations longer than in average cases. And these posterior contacts are causing uh, some anterior teeth to uh, move buccally, to rotate, or to cause diastema. This encouraged us to develop a our own protocol of patient examination, which helps to determine which contacts are causing the anterior teeth to move. This concept and this examination protocol was already published uh, in our articles, and uh, this can be applied uh, to either orthodontic patients or to any other type of dental patients. We understand that further investigation is necessary to determine the specific, uh, the specific correlations between these tooth movement patterns and the changes that they are causing. So this again makes us understand why the teeth level is the level of the highest adaptability. The next level that we're going to talk about is the level of the chewing muscles. And this level includes the um, functional examination of the temporal muscles, the masseter muscles, as well as the sternocleidomastoid muscles and the trapezius muscle. These uh, um, neck muscles are examined uh, during the extensive examination procedure. We are trying to make, to assess the uh, muscle load uh, the asymmetry of the muscle load between the right and left side and uh, vertically between the temporal muscles and the masseter muscles. It means that in patients that uh, have some teeth movements and uh, some uh, malocclusions, the muscles uh, will act and function differently and not always symmetrically. Uh, so we are trying to examine this type of asymmetry and to make some kind of uh, conclusions. Uh, so some patients, both adolescents and adult patients, may exhibit severe types of hypertrophy of the masseter muscles. And we have been observing that these types of hypertrophy are caused uh, also in some cases by uh, specific teeth positions. And altering these positions called, uh, causes muscles to um, be less uh, hypertrophic. The next level that I'm going to talk about is the level of the soft uh, tissues within the temporomandibular joint. These tissues include ligaments, disc, and the capsule. Uh, the procedure of the functional examination of this level, of this area, is the joint vibrant analysis. This procedure um, is aimed to capture and to analyze uh, the vibrations born within the temporomandibular joint. We, uh, in this case, we have a, a specific vibrations and a specific data set, uh, a preliminary diag uh, diagnostic data which is used later to make a final diagnosis. And uh, the final diagnosis is made, of course, with the use of the MRIs and CBCTs. The fourth level is the level of the temporomandibular joint bones. 
All the pathologic changes occurring within this level are, of course, less likely to be reversible. But uh, in any case, we have to analyze what has already happened and if there are any kind of inflammatory process, condition happening just in this, during this time before orthodontic treatment, it should be eliminated. So I strongly believe that this four-level concept will help uh, orthodontists to, to analyze all the changes that are happening within the temporomandibular joint, muscles and teeth and to make the connections between all these changes. This four-level concept is aimed to analyze and to examine the orofacial area functionally and gradually. And I strongly believe that the whole body, the whole organism acts as a single unit and that analyzing each structure functionally, we develop specific knowledge that helps us to understand what is happening within the whole body.